you're welcome back and i need to remind you that you can just drop by uh the front office of joy fm right here if you are driving past just stop and uh, enter and ask for a copy of the constitution the constitution that is 30 years old now the one we are talking about right now read understand it and help us be able to have a good you know reasoned conversation around the constitution at a time when the calls are rife for it to be amended. Hello, Dr. Mami Mensabunsu. Happy to, have our, to introduce our next guest, Mr. Ace Ananankuma, a very senior lawyer of 30 years plus standing. Um, and um, we will, yes, sorry. Just checking, Mr. Ankuma is here, right? So we'd, I'd like to introduce Mr. Ace Ankuma, who is a, um, a very senior lawyer, 30 years plus at the bar, um, and a, a, a well-known voice in Ghanaian um, public affairs. So thank you for joining us today, Ace, and um, please do go ahead and tell us what your case for constitutional review is. As Samson said, we ha you have 15 to 20 minutes, if you could please time yourself. Um, thanks for having me. Um, thanks for coming to the time limit. Um, I, because I talk for a living, when is, when is my time? Just meet me. Um, by all means, let's amend the Constitution. After three decades of the Constitution, it certainly is time to take another look at it. You're right, my, my entry into the legal profession coincided with the coming to force of this Constitution. So there's a, there's a, there's a, the suspense in which my entire legal career has been tied down to this constitution. Um, so by all means, let's make the changes. With the passage of time, we have seen things that we need to look at again. We've had one amendment. It's not as if we haven't amended before. I think we've had one ninety-six, which um, we, we, we removed the vice president from certain committees and ensured that parliament has a good tension to the last, to the last extent. There was also the citizenship bit along the line, but. We've had, we've had, we've had those, well, maybe several amendments in one or two, but we've had, it's not as if we haven't amended before. I believe that although there's, there's a need to look at and review the constitution for all of our problems, it's a strong man, the both man. Everything that we have failed or refused or neglected to do is blamed on the constitution. And then there's a clown cry, amend the constitution. <laughs> Let's do it. Some can be amended rather easily, but quite difficultly. Two thirds majority of parliament for the non entrenched clause. We saw one spectacularly fail a couple of years ago because we are so polarized that no party wants the other one to be the one to take the credit for a constitutional amendment. Then we have to do the non-entrenched provisions. We have to go to the people. 40% of registered voters must vote. 75% of them carry it. The last attempt also ended because there was a change of government. And the new government did not look like it was interested in putting that agenda forward. And so we will be calling for a change in the constitution for a very long time. My thing is that what happened between now and then able to change the in whatever way possible, either by means or by the subtle or not so subtle hints of it. Now, every constitution is on paper, and you have letters of ink. That paper and that ink cannot write pen themselves. It's the people who are the Says what nothing and beneficiaries of the constitution will not rise up, spend the constitution, but rather make it the written boy of all our problems. And I think that that is where we are. Now, how did others, we, everybody refers to the, the United States, uh, some refer to it and then pretend not to be referring to it. How do we set their constitution? I think it's three C's. One, they all form that these are things we agree upon. And so, although it might not be said in our constitution, Compared to the 
But they have four conventions that are come and they consider not bound by it because over and above the constitution, people ought to be able to see and say. Mm. The three, the third one is that they have used challenges. Literally, almost every part of that constitution has been tested in court. Literally. And so, when they are not clear, where the, the convention and Congress cannot step in or will not step in, have gone to court and challenged it. And through that, they have enforced constitutional principles, some of which we have adopted in our constitution. I don't think we are seeing enough of that. And so, while screaming for that the constitution should be changed, we should ask ourselves, are we even worthy of this constitution? What have we done with this? We have a situation where we are perfected evading the constitution and defying it and calling ourselves man. And when we are defied, we have more provisions to defy and not follow. This constitution said in 19, that when it came to force in 1993, that parliament must, as soon as possible, come up with a right, a spousal right to property in law, which determines property rights of spouses. It's been 30 years, nothing, apart from the steel droplets they put in the land act. Parliament has failed or refused or neglected to do it. And we want to amend the constitution to say what? We can't hold parliament responsible for the duty that the constitution has given to it. So, and, and the other one, the one is one side, that parliament must modify the loan regime which is applicable to international business and economic transactions. The Supreme Court has been begging parliament to do it. So now that parliament has refused to step to their place, we have a system where we, are, we have le le legislative legislation by the accident of litigation. So if somebody goes to court raise the point, then the Supreme Court will literally make the law that Parliament is supposed to make. And we are not insisting on this. Nobody is insisting that these constitutional provisions be followed by Parliament. And we want amendments. We talk about the president being too powerful. I agree. We need to take some power, especially the power of appointments, some, from, 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 uh, some of it from the president. But wait a second. In 1969, under the leadership and guidance of the Kufadu, the elder, the one who became the ceremonial president, we decided that the previous presidency was indeed too powerful. So we made sure that we provided language that insulated the judiciary from executive influence. That is the judiciary shall not be subject to the control or direction of any other person. Then we decided that there are having separated powers. There are certain functions that we don't want to be under executive influence. For example, the election function, the auditing function, the role of the press. And so we created constitutionally independent bodies who, although were appointed at the time by the ceremonial president, were given the same quality of independence as the judiciary that will not be subject to the direction and control of any other person or authority. What have we seen? The president appoints, and for the longest time, is able to exert influence. I ask a question. Can the president order the chief justice to go on leave if the chief justice hasn't gone on leave? If the president cannot, then the president cannot order the EC boss or the auditor general to go on leave. It's as simple as that. Now, if we will not fight to protect the few ring fenced institutions from executive control, we are asking for more power to be taken so we will allow them to be influenced as well. We must sit down and have introspection. How have we been faithful to this document that we want changed? If we have not been able to protect it, whatever we do, we will not protect it. It will just be another nicely written piece of paper and we will expect the ink to rise up in the alphabet to defend themselves. And so I'm saying that between now and whenever we are able to, we must begin to have our own change where we are rising up as we make. If the, if, if the 
electoral bodies and the auditing bodies and the judicial body are not complying with the law. The constitution provides how that should be done. Let me get to the third one. Gerrymandering is the delight of the EU that we like to refer to, where literally no political reason the constitution, the, the constituency increases, etc. etc. They are able to determine the state of elections. Our constitution looked at it and said the executive and the legislature have no role in the creation of constituency. That is limited to the electoral commission. And the constitution gives guidelines, even time specifications on when that could happen. But what have we seen happen? The political class then sat down and Did ACE's line break? Please, is, is ACE offline? Well, I... uh, ACE's line is breaking. Uh, hello, ACE. Hello, I, I think I went offline briefly. Yes, back? yes, ACE, you were making a very hello. significant point on uh, what the Constitution says about the EC and why the political parties don't have a role in delimiting constitutions. And then your line broke. Thank you very much. Th th thank you very much. I was saying that, that the, the political forces of the land are not supposed to have any influence on it. But what they did from 1990 was to sit down quietly and instead a line in the then Local Government Act and now the Local Government Act, which says that a person cannot belong to two district assemblies at the same time. That means that an MP can belong to two district assemblies. So what the political forces do is that when they see that the seven-year cycle for creating consequences is coming up, they create district assemblies. They create districts. And so that it and because it cannot belong to two district assemblies, EC is forced to create the constituencies to follow the lead of the executive and legislature. And we sat down for this to happen for 30 years. And we want to amend the constitution instead of screaming at them to stop it. If we can't scream, what do we want? So literally, check the evolution of the creation of constituency. Nisi will say, we follow the constitution, we follow the seven year cycle, we follow everything. But he cannot deny that because by the local governance act, whichever is whatever it is called over the period, it was local government that is not local government. We said, the president cannot belong to two district assemblies. The MP cannot belong to two district assemblies. So they are forced to create constituencies. Here, the remainder, a, a more perfect constitution. We talk about and the gravy train. Uh, I think we're still getting a bit of a difficulty with ACES connection. Um, ACES line just went off again, correct? <clears throat> okay, so we, we have a little difficulty. Um, ACES, ACES uh, connection. ACES connection has just uh, been lost again. And He's making a very important point. If you have followed Ace recently, he's written about amending the constitution we don't deserve. And he believes, as you can hear him uh, begin to say uh, very straightforwardly, that there, there's something that we ought to be doing as citizens, as you know, participants in the process, um, rather than, yes, there, there, might, there should be some amendments, but there are things that the Constitution requires to be done that are not being done, that we must play our role and insist that they are done. So that's, that's one of the important points he's making. Uh, unfortunately, his line is breaking. We are trying to see if we can uh, reconnect with him so that he would continue with his point. Um, our last uh, speaker will be uh, Caitlin Ade, who is the chairperson of the NCCE. They definitely will have some role to play once we all agree that we need a constitution, a new one, or we need to amend, they will need to educate the people. Uh, just stop by the front office of Joy FM. 
within the show, after the show, it is no more available to you to pick a copy of the Constitution. All right, so we now have A. Sankuma on phone, uh, hoping that it will be uh, good to continue with him on that. Hello, Ace. Hi, Samson. Uh, right. Thanks. So I, I, I was beginning to speak about, about Article 71, and we are all talking about it. What a crazy train it is that people get fast money at the end of every, every cycle because they are, they are deemed to have retired and come back to office. Where in the Constitution is the number, is the, are, are the numbers dictated? No. The Constitution said there should be a commission that should determine the terms and conditions and emoluments of certain office holders for a specific term of the term, for a specific period, four years. What has the political class done? They have deferred it. Although the constitution especially demands that it starts when a term starts, they defer it to the end of the term. Mm -hmm. So that by the time the commission is appointed and does its work, there's very little time for public debate. So it goes to the president to approve of the parliament and go to parliament to approve for the executive wrap my back they have they agree on fat amount of money for the most part as back pay and then pension and so everybody who fits article 71 place once the back pay is calculated makes the back pay and we as the people can't insist that a president who comes to power must immediately set up the committee for the committee to give the figures for, for there to be enough time for the people of Ghana to be able to debate it and not at the midnight of power. And if we can't do something as simple as this. We can't tell the president that set up the committee now to determine now what your emoluments are instead of quote and unquote stopping what was prepared for your predecessors in the hope that when the committee is set up in, in the next couple of years, times would have changed. It will recommend increases in your salary. That new increased salary will be used to calculate your back pay and your pension, so you go as away and join the gravy train. And we want, we, we can't do this, and we want, we think, we think that simply amending the constitution will resolve this. Let me move on to the number of Supreme Court judges. I hear it all the time, you know, and I agree. Maybe the the the, the framers should have provided a cut, but maybe they expected us to be sensible and reasonable. That. We won't give you a cap because things might change. And we don't want you to be stuck in a situation where you have to amend the constitution every time that the, 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 the situation on the Supreme Court changes. And look, we give the U.S. as an example, nine judges. But the U.S., through their indeliminate proceedings, determine how many cases the Supreme Court is going to hear anyway. Majority, the vast majority of cases don't get heard. And the Supreme Court does not have that benefit. In all of its jurisdictions, original, appellate, uh, what, special Z's, there are about six of them. In all of them, the Supreme Court must sit and hear the matter. Who has done the math? What's the volume of work? How many pages are these people reading? How many judgments are they produced? What is the work in progress time? From filing to decision, how long does it take? Why is it taking three years for a simple constitutional challenge to be heard? It, is it because we think the judges are simply lazy? Is it because we don't have enough judges? Or is it because they are strong with work? Nobody is doing the heavy lifting. We just want to make the noise. Provide a cup. So the cup might be too wide or might be too small. But we need to roll our sleeves up and ask, why is this going on and what can we do? Well, why not? Let's amend the Constitution and provide a cup. Because we think that amending the Constitution is a simple answer to all our problems and a simple refusal to think, roll up our feet and do the heavy lifting. Let me end with this. We want to amend the Constitution. Let's get ready. And I believe in constitutional amendments of Constitution. And the singly bill threat of uh, some other things, well, we'll, 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 let us cross our flow that bridge if we ever get there. But between now and then, I think that we need to form our own CD. Uh, like, uh, the CDC, which is the com either committee for the defense of the constitution or constitution defense committee, where a number of people in this country will say, let us defend this document that we have put down from these, these executive tricks and, judi and, and judicial tricks, where, where they, 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 they do everything in their power to breach the constitution. If they make any wrong move, we are either making noise in their ears or we are taking them to court 
for them to be judicial determination on this issue. Whether we win or not, it's another thing. And so, listen, the Constitution everybody refers to, they maintain it through conventions, through the Congress, and through their court. Ghana, can we evolve conventions? Can we use, can Parliament step up and do what the Constitution has instructed the Parliament to do? Instead of simply not doing it, and then asking for change. The worst is when I heard the majority and minority leader telling that the Constitution has to change. I, after I asked my question, the, the, that, that whole session ended. Congress must step up to our Congress, Parliament must step up to it, and then the challenge is something you and me being prepared to take the government on. Look, and, and I, I, you know I'll refer to this. Is it not the Constitution that said that the Auditor General must disallow and take us? Why is it that for almost 30 years they didn't do it? Yes. And everybody just sat down. Somebody has to go to court, spend money, go to court before the court will order the, the, the Auditor General to do what the Constitution says it should do. And you can see that now that the Auditor General is doing it, Parliament is very uncomfortable. The Executive is very uncomfortable. Parliament is trying to control the Auditor General. The Executive is trying to control the Auditor General. The last attempt by the Attorney General, it took civil society to rise up to tell the Attorney General that you can't give instructions to the Auditor General. That was a good step. Mm. We need more people to form themselves into a committee for the defense of the Constitution. And if we have defended the Constitution and it still hasn't worked, then we can make a stronger case for amending it. But right now, we simply blame the paper when we are the ones at fault. Okay. I'm saying that maybe we do not deserve the Constitution. And maybe the first amendment we need is the amendment of the Ghanaian and not probably the paper. If we can't work this Constitution, mm. trust me, a Constitution written in heaven in, in, on tablets with gold won't work in Ghana because we will find ways of breaching it. That is what we do. It's a special thing. And so let's amend ourselves first and then let's amend the paper. Thank you. The first amendment the most important is to amend the Ghanaian, amend our mind, amend our ways, form, you know, a cadre of defenders of the Constitution. Very, very uh, significant points there made. Um, I think we can have Mame, you know, uh, give us some two minutes commentary and then I'll bring on our final guest. Mami, unmute. Sorry. Um, thank you, Thompson. Um, thank you, Ace. I think that is um, what I, I like the verbs of his speech. I'm always asking for verbs. When people say we have to do something different, we have to do something different. Well, how do we do something different? So I'm going to commend Ace on giving us very clear verbs of the things we can do differently. And it's, he's, he picks up on the thing that I was talking about, about institutionally creating bad people. And um, and he's very right that Parliament actually carries a lot of the blame for the things that don't work well in our constitution. Um, because no constitution can provide for everything. It, and if it did, it would create a robotic people if it was successful in doing so. At some point, there's a, there's a meeting between, between text and people, their choices, their discretion, the things that they would prioritize. Yes, the ordinary a rural Ghanaian may not be in a position to hold their parliament, uh, parliamentarian accountable. And that may be, that is a problem of, that's one of the problems that Oliver identifies with our constitution that, and, and as Bridget was saying, the impact on, on human lives. But there is a class of Ghanaians who could and should and don't. So when, um, um, when Ace talks about how it took civil society rising up to tell um, the attorney general, it's, he's right, civil society did that. But civil society ought to do that. That is civil society's role. There's nothing particularly impressive about civil society having to do that because democracy is a three-way pact between the state, its agents, and the people whose power they are exercising. So yes, parliament is to blame for a lot of our problems, for the practices that don't allow for accountability, for not ensuring things that um, they've been empowered to do are done. You know. I was complaining about the secret ballot. This is a parliamentary rule. It's no way in our constitution that our parliamentarians should vote secretly. The, 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 the majority whip and the minority whip and, and the heckling that happens in parliament as concerted <laughs> efforts. This is no, no way in our constitution mm. that parliamentarians should all say no about something, whether they agree with it or it's no way in our constitution. These are institutions, these are choices that we are creating institutional practice mm. to, to 
and trench. And so as A says, a lot of our problems can be solved by our political class mm. actually bothering to do what the political class of the 1950s did. Yeah. You know, the J.B. Dankwas and the Nkrumahs were willing to be in prison over, over principles, right? And our, right. Our, our parliamentarians um, vote for things they don't believe in. Mm. Mm. So uh, what, it, uh, to that extent, he is right. What could constitutional mm. change do for that? All right. Right. There oh. also are proper things that need to be to be to be changed, okay. and I'd, I'd like to very finally comment on the cap on the on on the on the Supreme Court. Ace is completely right. This there must be a cap. There must be a cap. Why must there be a cap? <laughs> right. Um, the the better question is what does our Supreme Court do? Mm. What are the jurisdictions assigned to the Supreme Court? Do we need more judges or fewer jurisdictions? It is cheaper to have fewer jurisdictions in the Supreme Court than to have more Supreme Court judges. All right. So given our economic challenges, perhaps mm. we should consider that. And okay. then we, in having to do so, we should have an intelligent and informed conversation about the jurisdictions that the Supreme Court exercise, which That's... ones they must exercise. Right. Why must a, an injunction in a family matter at the district court go all the way to the Supreme Court on appeal? <laughs> so these kinds of things we need to work out all right. um, rather than kind of, you know, get on trains about things like a cap, a cap, a cap. We, we can't contain all human action. Thank you very much. And